Well, 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 here we have an instructional video for how to change the ribbon on a Remington Portable, which this is going to be the same for the Remington Portable 1, Remington Portable 1 all the way up to the Model 5. Um, that's including the Monarchs and the Envoys and the, oh, what is it, the uh, uh, Remet, all of those guys, because they all have the exact same arrangement. I mean, not the exact same, but they're they're close enough for government work, right? Um, on the, the ones where you got to raise the type bar up, uh, you're going to want to, you know, we for all of them, really, you want to engage your shift lock just to give you a little more space, but you can't engage the shift lock on the, the one and the two without raising the type bar. So I'm going to go ahead and raise the type bars on these, and then I'm going to engage the shift lock, because you'll notice that the carriage moves back, right? And we're going to be dealing right in here quite a bit. So engage the shift lock, give myself a little more room to work. And then we're uh, first going to be concerned with how to remove the old ribbon, which if you already don't, ha you know, if you don't already have one installed, then that's not your concern. Um, and somewhat to your disadvantage, because I strongly recommend taking pictures of how the ribbon is at least right in here if that's going to be an issue for you and possibly right in here but we'll try and cover how it's supposed to properly be which for that matter that's how it's supposed to be you'll notice that you have this little stud right there as well as a little flange that sticks out and those are both pretty handy to grab on uh, where's a little pencil or something here we go you'll also notice there is a little guide arm that sits outside the ribbon right there. And the ribbon also sits inside this other guide, um, which kind of wiggles back and forth, right? And it's important when you're removing the spools to make sure that that guide arm is outside the rotation. And you'll need to make sure that this is arranged just right, because if it's like that it'll catch the lower edge of the ribbon and same thing on the other side and you won't be able to pull it out and you risk damaging it. Um, once you have it in you'll want to make sure that this guide arm is properly adjusted to where it's not binding on the lower well, I don't even know what you call that the lower half of the spool right because um, that'll impede the the circular movement of the spool itself. So first off I'm gonna go ahead and pull my ribbon up and out if I can grab it. That will get it around out from around that and then I'm going to want to remove and you know, I'll pull that guy out to get the spool off of there. Might be a little snug. All right got that one off. Do the same thing on the other side. So you'll notice that one is full. This one is spent. This entire ribbon arrangement, the uh, the feed arrangement on these, you know, when it automatically reverses, that's based off of the position of this thing, specifically on how, you know, hang on here, specifically on how that stud feeds into this little doodad right there. Because once that tries to turn and that stud engages just the right way, it's going to pop this guy back to switch the ribbon direction. Um, so you'll notice that you know the, the implication of this for changing the ribbon is that that guide arm right in there is way on up inside that spool. So I'm gonna pull that spool out or yeah, pull that guide out and be able to raise my spool up. Now I'm gonna pull my ribbon out first. There we go. And see what I was talking about as far as making sure this thing is in the right position. Because like right there, it's down inside that spool. And notice I can't pull it up because that guide is blocking it. So holding this one out, make sure that is properly aligned. Kind of. There, there we go. Boink. Got it. So now, we've got both of the spools off of there, Let's turn our attention to the vibrator. Um, you can, with one finger in between the G and the H, you can push both keys down at once, right? 
this will take these type bars and then we're going to intentionally jam them not very hard certainly not enough to bend them but we just want to raise that vibrator up see how the vibrator comes up as we push those and it stays up as they jam you'll get a little more travel out of it if you put the uh, the vibrator selector on the red setting you know there's your black there's your red so we're going to put that on the red setting because it raises the whole vibrator up a little bit farther we're going to very gently jam those keys all right now you want to take it i mean take pictures <laughs> absolutely pictures worth a thousand words right which i guess i'm taking a picture for you whatever um you'll notice that the ribbon is running behind this one and in front of this one while being hooked underneath that little bit right there and it's the same on both sides so you're gonna grab the ribbon on each side pull down to free that side pull down to free that side and you can kind of brace the ribbon or brace the vibrator which without or what other side you're, you're not working on at the moment just to keep it from popping back down so now the whole thing is free right and this is where you get into you know what do you do when you, you actually have a new ribbon but you only got one set of spools you know because it's a half inch ribbon and you can get half inch ribbon all day long but uh, you know once once you got six yards of ribbon you might need to put it on some fresh spools so you know here's a here's a little ghetto arrangement that works just fine I've seen powered arrangements that will wind the whole thing for you but I prefer to do it by hand because then I can maintain tension on the whole ribbon as I'm spinning it and winding it on there just like that I can sit there and do this until it's done right now most of the spools that you're gonna come across they uh, they're either gonna have a a stud inside there that you impale the ribbon on or it might be like these where there is see if I can get the light on the angle just right I don't know if I'm gonna be able to well maybe there's a little catch just inside there it's a little flap that the ribbon sits underneath it'll pop away from the center of the spool and you snap the ribbon underneath it right see how the little piece moves back and forth so you'll lay the ribbon in there uh, let's make sure I got both of these going the right direction and do 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 I'm gonna lay that ribbon right in there and I'll normally stuff it down in there with a screwdriver or something just to where it sits underneath that little tab and you're gonna push that tab around to where it snaps down over the center post of the spool as well as over the ribbon and it'll kind of click into place if you got a good one there we go so now you can wind your ribbon up properly right but you know, I already got a fresh ribbon on this one. This one's a fresh ribbon too. It's for a different machine. Just wanted to be able to show that. Um, so now, putting the ribbon back on, right? First thing you're going to want to do is put it on the, the spools. So we're going to take our spool, make sure that the side with the studs is down. Now, the, uh, the original Remington spools, and you know, frankly, a lot of them that. Uh, aren't original but whatever I mean uh, you know if you're using it for a Remington portable then you got to make sure that you got the right size and you got to make sure that it's got the two little opposing studs right there poking out on one side because those studs are, are what allows the ribbon itself to feed otherwise it's just going to sit and spin and that's no fun for anybody unless that's what you're into um, so we're going to make sure that we can get this thing on there and by that I mean we need to make sure that this arm is not going to be hitting that lower half of the spool. We also need to make sure that this piece is aligned to where the spool can pass it by. 
So you're going to sit it on there, push it down very gently. And now we need to make sure that those slots which are underneath, or rather that those tabs that are underneath fit into those slots. So you're going to rotate the ribbon just a little bit until it falls down. It'll, and it's only going to move like a millimeter, so you've got to watch out for it pretty careful. So now we have our ribbon spool on there and the whole thing's inside, right? So you're going to let that guide arm slot down on the outside of the ribbon. And then you're going to take the ribbon itself and you're going to pull it outside of this guide but inside of that hinge to where it sits underneath this little tab, right? So right there, just like that. So now the guide arm is outside the ribbon and this curved guide piece is inside the ribbon. Do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to move that guide arm out. Make sure, actually I guess you can just roll that guy all the way out. And again, this is with the, the studded side down to fit into those two slots. Right there. Let the guide arm drop into place after making sure that those guys are doing. There it drops down. Push the center guide around. So now we have, again, this guide arm is on the outside of the ribbon, and the ribbon is outside of this curved guide piece. So now our ribbons spools are seated on both sides and we just got to turn our attention to the vibrator. Which by the way, as far as how you, you roll the ribbon, it needs to be opposed, you know. It, uh, well, just like that actually, you know, it's going clockwise on one and counterclockwise on the other. Alright, so for Putting the, the ribbon into the vibrator, it's easiest if you kind of bow the ribbon a little bit like that, you know, in theory, I mean, whatever. We're going to take it and go behind the, or <laughs> between this guide and the vibrator down in there just like that. And I'm going to brace the vibrator on one side with my thumb very gently because I don't want to bend it. I don't want to form it anyway. And so with it behind the centerpiece, you're going to want to slot it between these two on the right hand side. You know? So it needs to go under this one, but on top of this one. I'm going to take it down and then go farther than we need to go to make sure that it sits underneath this little tab at the top. Just like that. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to hold the ribbon here and brace it with my thumb. Brace the vibrator with my thumb, rather. And on the left, we're going to slot it between those two, underneath the first and on top of the second. Pull it down farther than it needs to go and slot it underneath that tab. And it should look just like that when you're done. Push those guys up. Now, you need to take up the slack on your ribbon itself. Make sure that it's laying in there good. And you want to be careful as you're doing this because a lot of the time your ribbon will overwind, or rather it'll, it'll be overly slack and it'll fall down in there. And that's not much fun to deal with and you end up having to redo the whole thing. Um, and as far as how it sits in here, it's going to want to sit underneath this tab and inside of that hinge. So we've got the ribbon in position. I'm going to spin the spool just a little bit to take up slack. Now only one of your spools is going to spin freely, you know, because the, and it, it, I don't know which, because it depends on which direction your vibrator is going, you know, if it's, or uh, which direction your ribbon feed is going. So we got our slack taken out. Check it on this side as well. 
and we look good. So that's really all there is to it. Uh, sounds a lot harder than, than it really is. I mean, once you do it a time or two, then there's nothing to it. Um, but now, ha, the easiest part, and kind of the most fun, it's a little bit rewarding. You've got all this ink on your fingers, at least I do, I get it because you know, I'm doing a fresh ribbon, right? Um, so how do you get rid of that? Well, you get a paper towel or a cotton pad or something, and isopropyl alcohol, works like a charm. You don't want to get it on the platen because rubber and alcohol are not necessarily friends. And depending on the typewriter you have, which Remington's it's not that big of a deal, but you know, whatever, on any paint finish, you don't want to get the alcohol on there too much. Because um, it is a solvent. It's a very weak one, but it is a solvent. Since it is a solvent, it will take that ink right off of your fingers. Lickety split. Which I recommend doing quickly because this crap does not come out of your clothes very well and you certainly don't want to be tracking it all over your machine. So anyway, there you go. Fresh ribbon on your little Remington portable. That doesn't matter if it's a one, a two, a three, a four. Is there a four? Hell, I've never had a four. I don't know. It seems, for me, it just seems to go straight from the three to the fives. I guess there's one out there, but I ain't seen it yet. Um, Voila, hope this helps. Um, can't remember the username, but this was by request. So, uh, enjoy. <laughs>